Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I'm shooting this uh, little revolver here. Um, we'll fire a couple of shots and then we're going to talk about why I believe that revolvers are usually really bad choices for most women, uh, most you know, who are beginners especially, uh, for self-defense. Okay, so let me fire a couple of shots. I'm shooting at about 30 feet here. All right, so um, a couple of days ago, I was called to a gun range uh, to train a couple. They had just bought their first guns. Um, the, uh, the husband bought a uh, Glock 19 MOS. Uh, he had a house on 507C on it. Um, and the, uh, the reason why he bought it, um, basically the, uh, the, the gun store that he bought it from, I, a couple of weeks ago, I went in there and I you know, recommended to them they, that they start selling um, you know, they start really stocking up on um, a house on 507C uh, optics, preferably the 507 ACSS, um, which is really kind of hard to get. So I told them that they should try and tr sell them in, you know, in combination because I have seen that, that people shoot the pistols a lot better. So the husband uh, got the 507C optic with his uh, uh, Glock 19 MOS. The wife got the, um, it was the Smith & Wesson. Uh, model model 642 um, all aluminum frame hammerless right so it was kind of covered over here light gun uh, in the gun store right they had her squeeze the trigger to make sure that she could squeeze the trigger and she was able to do that okay um, now one of the things that I have found is that you know holding the revolver first of all a lot of women really have a hard time just squeezing the trigger uh, this one was strong enough that she was able to do it but when I had her, you know, um, you know, when I had, when I met her at the gun range, and I put the target because I had brought these targets along, um, I put the target out there at about 30 feet, the way that target is right now, and I had her aim at the target, center mass, right, and I told her to aim and squeeze the trigger, and what happened was that now that she was aiming, the gun was starting to move all over the place as she was squeezing that trigger because. You know, now she's trying to keep line up her sights and squeeze the trigger. Uh, in the gun stores, they just have them do this, uh, which is very different than aiming and pressing the trigger. Okay, so um, what I did, uh, this is the typical uh, way that I train people. Um, I brought along my gun. Um, you know, first, I had them shoot this Palmetto PX9 uh, with, the, uh, with the optic. Um, you know, I had brought along my targets. And, uh, you know, at, uh, at 30 yards, which is about 80 feet, uh, they were both getting about 95% hits with this rifle. Okay, so, uh, and, and I started them off with this, and they're, first of all, they're, 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 loving, they're loving it, right? They're, they're having fun shooting, they can hit the targets. You know, that's why I usually start people off with a rifle. Uh, then, uh, I had them shoot the husband's uh, uh, Glock MOS. Now, I had to sight it in first, all right, so I sighted it in. I gave him, I think, about a, a 20 yard zero. I sighted it in, uh, then I had the husband shoot. Uh, he is easily hitting uh, targets at about, um, um, what was he, at, at about uh, uh, 40 feet away. And then I had him hit targets out at about 80 feet away, and he's even hitting those, okay? So husband's doing great with the Glock MOS, easy stuff. I put the wife on it. Um, she's at, at the um, 40 feet, she's hitting about 80 percent so she's doing really good then i pushed her back to about 80 feet and she's getting a few hits there too so she's doing really good with the glock mos um you know i, I taught them how to reset you know how to look for that trigger reset so the finger's doing less work they're both getting excellent hits okay then i had them both try out the um the revolver right that was again that was the smith and wesson model 642 aluminum frame hammerless uh, had the husband do it okay so the husband who prior you know at about 40 feet was getting like 90 percent hits you know now he's down to like about 40 percent hits 35 percent hits right so then i put the wife on it at the same distance where the wife before was getting you know good hits like above 75 percent she can't get a single hit now okay uh, and then what i did is i because I, I had them shooting the five inch targets I pulled out the, uh, the, I had brought along that big target over there, that, um, the, um, 
uh, what is that? That's one foot one foot wide by two feet uh, long, uh, and I brought it at half the distance. So now I got them. And I got her shooting at about 15 feet. She can't get hits on, at that distance either. Put her back on the on the uh, on the Glock. Real easy. She's getting hits at that distance. Put her back on the revolver. She can't get hits. And again, the reason is because now she has to aim and press the trigger. Now the other difficulty that we ran into. Um, it was a cloudy day. It was actually, it was kind of drizzling, and we were you know the, this range basically had a uh, a canopy right. It, it was covered, um, so the the uh, the, the uh, revolver, um, you know which was aluminum, had a gray front sight, gray rear sight, um, and she they both had a difficult time um, actually you know seeing the sights. Okay, I, I shot the gun myself, um, you know. Obviously, I, you know, because of my experience, I was able to hit the targets, right? I was able to find the sights, hit the targets, but um, because it wasn't that bright out, because we wanted to cover, you know, I could see that, yeah, it is kind of difficult to see the sights uh, because they, they were the same, you know, they were both the same color. Now, um, realistically speaking, the, you know, the inside of your house in the evening is typically not super lit up, right? Um, you know, so here's part of the reason why I switched um, to carrying a Glock 43 with an optic is because uh, I definitely saw that I had a problem um, in, lo in in low light conditions, right? Or, I mean, or even just dusk, you know, or uh, inside, you know, indoors, you know, where it's not super bright, where it's just, you know, the, the normal, you know, uh, brightness that people typically have uh, inside their homes in the evenings, um, you know, I have, I have a hard time finding the sights um, even when they're, you know, t because a lot of times when you have the uh, the night sights, um, like this one over here, right, the front sight is, is, is uh, glow in the dark, rear sight is blank, but here's the thing, um, inside of the home in the evening, it's really, it, it, it's not, because it has to be dark enough for that glow in the dark to really light up, so when it's just low light, that's not going to light up, so when it's like low light, the glow in the dark doesn't light up rear sight I can't I can barely see it um, so the optic really makes all the difference because in all lighting conditions I can come out find that optic and, and hit my targets okay so um, so that wasn't so that was definitely an issue with the, with the uh, uh, Smith & Wesson model 642 all gray gun gray sights gray front sight gray rear sight they had a really hard time finding the sights but also um, you know they had when they did find the sights they had a real hard time pressing that trigger and keeping the sights on targets even though she was able to do this and squeeze the gun you know when I told her to keep her sights on target and press the trigger you know she was she was moving the gun around a little bit so uh, I've, I've seen this many times before that's why you know I, I tell people that that revolvers are usually really bad choices uh, for most women um, usually for most guys too um, there's a reason why you know, semi-automatic uh, semi pistols are so popular. And there's a reason why the military, you know, back in the early 1900s, moved away from revolvers as as quickly as they possibly could, right? Uh, they, they went to semi-automatics. Um, you know, out in, in the field, what happens is the, the gears of the revolver are exposed, right? So if you get any dirt or sand in the... If you drop this in the dirt and you get dirt in there, the gears are exposed, so, so the gun's going to jam up, okay? So... Um, you know, you know, in 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 in, in, in a realistic outdoor envir environment, revolvers are pretty easy to jam up. With the semi-automatic, uh, it's closed. You know, so the only time the gun opens up is when you fire it. Okay. Now, the other thing that's uh, worth mentioning, um, when she was in the gun store, um, they they had her try to rack the slide, um, on the on the pistol, right, on on the Glock, and uh, she had a hard time racking the slide, and that's part of the reason why why they kind of you know she kind of went with the revolver but uh here's the thing um first of all you're going to load up the gun right put around the chamber uh put it in the holster because the holster is a safe there's a safety mechanism for the for the pistol you're going to do that all in advance okay so at the point where you're actually ready to use a pistol for self-defense the the magazine's already in there is in there the rounds already in the chamber all you got to do is take it out of the holster and the gun is ready to fire. So all the hard work has already be do been done. So um, the loading and the and the chambering part, you know, the preparing, the preparation part might be a little bit more difficult with the semi-automatic, um, whereas the preparation part of just 
you know, loading this gun is easier on the revolver. However, the shooting part is a lot harder on the revolver, whereas the shooting part is a lot easier on a on a semi-automatic pistol. And obviously, with a with a rifle, it's even easier. Okay. Um, so that so that's one of the things. Now, the other thing um, with this Glock uh, MOS that they bought in the store, the optic was not installed. So in the store, she was basically trying to grip. The grips here and she saw that her fingers she couldn't have enough strength to rack the slide however once i ins you know actually i didn't install the optic i sighted it in but the husband installed the optic once the optic was installed i said okay great now hold the gun grab the optic here and rack the slide she had no problem racking this slide once the optic was installed okay so so now she had something to grab onto and it made it a lot easier for her to rack the slide so uh, that issue was gone. Um, she had uh, a little bit of an issue with uh, taking the magazines out, with hitting the magazine release button. But she she was still, you know, she had to work it a little bit. Um, you know, now with this uh, Glock that I got here, when I when I built this gun, uh, this came with the extended magazine release, which is obviously a lot easier. Uh, the problem is that if you have an extended magazine release, I find that a lot of times when it goes into the holster, the holster hits the magazine release and the magazine pops out. Uh, so what I do when I get the um, extended magazine releases, I actually I, uh, I, I file them down a little bit um, and I get them so that they're just a, a tiny bit longer than the standard ones, uh, but way shorter than the extended ones. And I find that, you know, I, basically I file it down to a point where it doesn't hit the holster. Uh, and it's easy for most women to, to hit the button and get the magazine out. So uh, that, that's another option. However, even with, this, with the factory um, magazine release, you know, she didn't have that much of a, of a hard time. Plus, it's a, it's a Glock 19. It's got 15 rounds, you know, in the gun. So it is not likely she's, she would have to reload the gun, okay? Um, so, again, you know, the, versus the revolver, which only has five rounds, right? It was a five-shot five revolver, um, you know. Realistically, um, in a, in a self-defense, stressful type of situation, you know, if she can't, she's never going to get a chance to reload this, okay? Even though this might be a little easier, you know, to open this up, drop these out, you know, let's say you have a speed loader. Realistically, she's never going to get to that point. So, uh, it's a lot better to have, you know, a, a pistol that has 15 rounds in it um, where you don't have to reload it, okay? So, uh, now, is there, is there a place for the revolver? Uh, with, especially, you know, particularly with women now. Uh, yes, there is. Okay, um, if, if for a woman that's going to buy a gun and has no intention of ever going to the gun range and ever practicing, uh, yeah, the revolver is easier to load. You know, if, if it's her intention to never practice with the gun, okay, um, the the revolver is is in that case is the better choice because at grappling distance where you're not gonna, you know you don't have to aim you know and she, where she could pull the trigger it's it's going to work so in that instance it's the better choice however you know most rooms inside of the house are at least 15 feet long and you know usually um, you know we advise people to uh, you know to, to designate a safe room uh, where you know basically to, to come up with a plan right so that in most cases that's the bedroom. And we tell them to go behind the bed so that there's some type of cover or some type of, of a obstruction. You know, some, there's a barrier between them and the person that's coming into the room. Um, so from the door to the behind the bed position, uh, there's about like 15 feet. Okay, so at grappling distance, you may be able to, you know, take this revolver, press it, and and, and you know, you're going to hit the target that's two feet in front of you. However, at 15 feet, which is where that that big target is that I was shooting before. You know, I gotta aim at that target. You know, I can't just point shoot a target at 15 feet. I have to, I have to aim at a target at 15 feet. So at 15 feet, point shooting is not gonna work. Uh, and especially if you only got five rounds in the gun, you know, basically all you got after that is, you know, is, is a really light hammer. Right? You know, maybe you could hit somebody with. Okay. Um, so, so, you know, as far as self defense, you have to plan for aiming. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, and you know, especially with the uh, you know with the optics, it, it gives a new shooter a tremendous advantage. And uh, you know, the situation that I'm explaining to you guys with this couple that I had, I've seen many times before. Um, now this was the case where they had already bought their guns, right? And they bought the Glock MOS. Uh, but a lot of times when I'm training beginners, 
you know, I bring out my guns and I'll put, you know, I mean, it's very typical for people to hit the targets. The very first shot that they fire with, with a gun that has an optic on it, you know, with the rifles, I will easily getting them, get them hitting 90, 95% hits at 30 yards, you know, about 80 feet. Uh, with the handgun at, uh, at, um, uh, at half that distance, at about 20 yards, I will have them, you know, I'll have them getting 75% hits with a pistol that has an optic on it. Okay, so uh, those are my thoughts I want to share with you guys. Um, a lot of times gun stores push the revolvers on women because they're easier, uh, you know, they are easier to load, they're easier to understand, but as far as actually shoot, you know, shooting it and hitting the targets, uh, revolvers are really difficult guns, you know, especially if you don't have a, sh a strong finger pull where you can basically pull the trigger and keep, you know, keep your sights on target as you do that. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you got any comments, put it in the comment section. I'd love to hear from you guys. If you're not a member from the channel, please subscribe. I'll talk to you guys soon.